Ah, oh, here we go again. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, boy. Oh no. <laughs> You're coming with me. <laughs> Nothing personal, kid. Hello there. Yeah. Enemy spotted. <laughs> Triple kill. Can I get a quadra? Don't kill him. I got a quadra. Don't kill him. No. No. I... No. Quadra. Don't stop. Quadra. Aw. What's the dog doing? What, what the dog, dog doing? doing? Stealing my kills is what it's doing. Hello, my dear viewers. Today's word of the day is Azan. What you just witnessed? The absolute brutality and loss of hope for the enemy team. That is what Azan as a champion brings to the table. He is the one true knight of the Pyre's army, with only one goal in mind. The absolute destruction of the Abyss. It's a bit ironic that my last video of this type was a completely busted tank. And back then I thought, no way can Evil Mojo make a champion more busted than this. Boy, was I wrong. But don't take my word for it. Take a look at this clip of Azan facing that very same busted tank. Oh, oh this guy's gonna be so annoying. I just Wait, bumped up no the ground, dude. Run. You see, Azan is pretty much the army knife of the realm. Do you want him to be a tank? No problem. You want him to be a flank? Sure, why not? Oh, what's that? You want him to be a DPS, flank, tank, and support at the same time? I got you, homie! Yeah, that's Azan. That's his on. Well, Hyrus has been kind enough to do just that. They pretty much looked at the champion creation menu and thought, what if we made a character so broken that he could completely ignore an entire enemy team and beat up the poor support trying their best to keep it alive? The CEOs all looked at each other, thought about it for a second, and said, yeah, that sounds great. Don't mind that the game's suffering already. Let's add something that makes people want to uninstall the game and throw away their PC after they play against him. Now, of course, there was probably at least one dev who said, Hey guys, uh, that might be a bad idea. But we all know what happens to those who don't follow orders. Good devs follow orders. But you know the worst part? This is the nerf to Zahn. Yes, he was even more broken before the nerfs. And still, with all the nerfs, Zahn is without a doubt the best champion currently in Paladins. So much so that a team without a Zahn, if playing properly, has no chance of winning the game. I mean... Just look at this, and my win rate isn't even close to what people who have been grinding this champion have gone to. If you've ever wanted to fix your KDA, Azan is the way. Is my team dead? Alright, time to go back to spawn. But, let's be honest, Evil Mojo isn't the only one to blame. The player base laughed at them when they tried to make a balanced character, so this immortal crusader was the result. Holy shit! Is this too easy for you? You know, I actually think the game seems pretty challenging. Alright, alright. Rants aside, what did the enemy team in the previous clip do wrong that game or could have done better? Surely Azan can't be that broken, right? Right? We start off on our trusty mount. Cauterized one is already bought, and I'm ready to fight. Azan is amazing at holding high ground. Or, well, well honestly any ground. So I charge in ahead of my team, and take advantage of Azan's kit to disrupt the enemy. This forces Maeve to fall down and separate from her team. Even with the healing she received, it was simply not enough to save her from my wrath. With the enemy flank out of the way, I proceed to bully their back line. Not finding the support, the fight ends up lasting longer than I initially expected, with Tyra being saved from becoming my next victim. After my failed attempt at a flank, you'd think I'd die, as the entire enemy team turns to focus on me after killing my teammates. But thanks to Zahn's sustain and damage reduction, I simply cannot die. I pretend to retreat and successfully bait an unsuspecting Lex. You fool. With Lex out of the picture, I proceed to push into the high ground and bully what's left of their team, primarily focusing on their main DPS. When I see Tyra low enough, I use Azan's ult and abuse a but I mean feature that was in the game for the entire patch. This feature allows you to cancel his long animation after ult, and provides the possibility for me to continue steamrolling their team. So I do just that and push their remaining flank that just came back from spawn. Deja vu. I've just been to this place before. I am destroying these lads. Yeah. By now, you're probably starting to see why I'm convinced Azan is extremely OP. The rapid sustain, ability to block off enemies, get out of fights with incredible mobility, and insane damage reduction make him the ultimate being. Zon's primary fire is called Judgment. You whip out this beautiful hunk of steel and proceed to toss it at every moving thing you see, bonking anyone who's been naughty. And oh boy, are there a lot of you in the Paladins community that we need to bonk. Stop it. 
get some help. It has an attack chain similar to Zin and does 525 damage, but that's only for the first two attacks, with the final and third strike being 630 damage. This also increases your ire bar. Speaking of, Azan has a similar bar of energy compared to Furia. It charges with every successful hit and can be used to make your skills more powerful, have a different effect, or synergize with loadout cards that you might have. All this combined together makes him the abomination that he is. The Hammer of Judgment makes you feel powerful, something like Thor, he was weak and suffering from extreme back pain. You see, Asan's base damage is not that great, and the slow speed of his attacks will cause you to miss some of your shots, or simply have a teammate you the kill. So how do I keep getting top damage and kills as Asan in pretty much every single game? Well, that's because bad damage aside, the rest of his kit makes up for it. And speaking of his kit, we have his secondary fire, Reckoning! Big Flame! Yeah, it's pretty much Reinhardt ult from Overwatch, but it's on your right click and a bit more disappointing. While it won't stun the enemy, it does lift them up into the air and hit them for 300 deeps. If you use this above IR threshold, and what they mean by that is the little gold bar at the end of your IR bar, it will reduce the skill's cooldown. Alright, so far very useful skills. And then we have the Wall, also known as Sanctuary. This skill can provide damage reduction buffs with the right loadouts, trap enemies, heal you, or even save you from a sticky situation. But what it's most known for is trapping your own teammates and letting them die a horrible, painful death. Oh, as all, please, I'm stuck. I'm uh, stuck. Sorry, oh, it's too bad. Oh, Best part is, you can't even disable this wall on your own. I'm getting the impression that Evil Mojo looks at the feedback we send them during PTS and goes, Feedback? What feedback? Seriously, it's such a simple change and there's no reason it should be like this. For a game that doesn't want toxicity, you sure add a lot of ways to do that very thing. Why am I toxic? <laughs> When used above our threshold, it will simply give the wall even more HP, making sure your teammate definitely can't escape. As if there weren't enough walls and paladins that you can get stuck in. Now we have to deal with Azan making new ones wherever he feels like it. But wait, if we can be toxic to our own teammates, how much worse can we make it for the enemy team? Like what? Thanks, Hi-Rez. Very cool. Apparently, spawn trapping is also a feature which Paladins endorses, and since Paladins has some of the worst map designs in gaming history, you can prevent an enemy team from ever defending on certain maps. They are simply forced to sit there and wait for the match to end. What kind of sadist thought of this champion? And as if that wasn't enough, he can also pin the enemy to said wall for an entire two seconds. <laughs> Azan surprisingly has incredible mobility for a tank, and the skill Conviction allows him to become one of the speediest champions in the game, but it also has an incredible offensive bonus. When charging into the enemy, you deal 150 damage on contact, and 350 more if you slam them into the wall, stunning them in place. The stun lasts longer if you slam them into your own wall, and of course you're immune to any knockbacks while charging, because why not, right? Azan, more like the train. Even trick moment, I'm saving that. <laughs> the fact that you can use this skill in any direction means the enemy team has nowhere to hide. Oh, what a day. Oh my god! Why are you in my room? But this skill goes beyond just boring old mobility when you're in the enemy's back line, so far from home. Your foe before you, but you lack the damage to take them out. And that's because they're playing the one and only Chad Buck. Well, there's only one thing you can do. We're going to the other box! Yup, you can just take the enemy down with you, in a beautiful display of personal sacrifice. Just be careful when using this tactic, as it can really backfire on you. Oh no! I oh. saw that! Okay. I saw that! <laughs> I didn't get her. I saw that! When you combo this ability with his ultimate, you can pretty much travel across the entire map. So if you're in a bit of a pickle, the enemy has killed your entire team, and now they have turned their bloodthirsty gazes towards you. Finally, they can end your reign of terror. You're all alone. Nowhere to go. Ah. Okay. Honestly, his mobility might be the best thing in this game, and that makes him really fun to play. Commit to it. See, I just can't die. Dude, I, just I don't can't have enough die. commitment. Speaking of his ultimate, it's called Deliverance, and as the name suggests, you deliver the enemy straight back to the abyss. Imagine you're a peaceful Strix just out for a stroll, sitting all the way back in your spawn, feeling good, feeling safe, or so you thought. No, Strix, there will be no frags for you today. Only pain. Help. <laughs> 
rise up into the air for 6 seconds, reducing the damage you take by 50%, and choose wherever you would like to fall. Then you throw your hammer down, dealing 725 damage and applying knockback on hit. Shortly after, you teleport down to your hammer, dealing another 150 damage and applying an even larger knockback in the area. This makes for a great escape too, or something to touch the point with at any given place in time. As bodies fly from your impact, a man is left to wonder, am I broken? Do I not? Long. Is this game simply not ready for me? Or am I the very justice they deserve? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Help me! Help me! Stop! Stop the break! Stop. I'm coming for you! Ah! 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 Boom! Bam! Ah! Big Slam! Oh, what a nuisance. Spider senses are starting to tingle. They're on the objective! <laughs> Got him! Get them off my point! Even the strongest of champions aren't perfect. I said as I died on the most broken character in the game. But all that aside, what if I told you that this isn't even Azan's final form? No, unfortunately for the entire realm, good or bad, just or evil, Azan will show no mercy. <laughs> Hello. How are you here? I'm right here. I know. Why? Giant can't climb. This is the idiot. I know. Please come back. I wanna fight. It's kept that fall time. All over again. I wanna fight. Please, fight. Please come back. I wanna fight more. more. Please come back. It's unreal. How is he generating that much power? What you've just witnessed is the absolute peak of Azan's power, and it comes from this abomination of a loadout worse than the Abyss itself. I've been crafting this monstrosity ever since the beta release, and have given it a proper name, The Crusade. But now for a word from our sponsor, Keeps. If you're becoming a buck main such as myself, you may have noticed a significant hair loss, and are on track to possibly become Buck himself IRL, with that shiny dome of his being your new feature. Help! Or maybe it's just the stress of playing paladins that has got you pulling out your hair. Well, if so, do not worry, Keeps has got your back. Keeps is a subscription-based service that provides clinically proven treatments to hair loss in men. And you know the best part? They deliver it straight to you. All their treatments are personalized, recommended by a doctor whose contact you will have for a year, and you'll be able to message him when you need it without any limitations? NEED HEALING! That's just quality service. The treatments themselves are affordable, and most customers notice results in as little as the first six months. Nice. With Keeps, you get fast quality service without having to leave your home and seek it out yourself, along with professionals who can help you through the entire process and provide you with the needed products on time, every time. It might be too late for my boy Buck, Aw oh, man! But it's not too late for you. Your hair loss stops now, and it's all thanks to Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to the link in the description below. Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video, give them some love guys, and let's get back to it. So what's so terrifying about this loadout, Raven? You might ask, my naive friend. Well, the cards for this Man of Steel are as follows. Grim Deliverance at 5 for that bulk heal on pretty much every single skill you use. Eternal Strife at 5 for even more healing on every single skill you use, but only when you're above higher threshold, which if you can even remotely aim, is all the time. We also have added Turnium at 3 for some extra damage reduction from my wall, along with True Conviction to give a tiny bit of help to the poor souls on my team that I will inevitably trap while using it. I hope you make it out, my friend. And last but not least, we have Tools of salvation for a simple buff to our health. This loadout will pretty much make you immortal, or at the very least, extremely close to it at the early game. With your weapons and armor polished, you're finally ready to take back the realm. We will take Jerusalem! And look good doing it. Stylish 12th century armor, a brand new shiny hammer, and a deck of cards from a children's card game? What is this, Yu-Gi-Oh? It's time to crusade, is what you'd like to hear, but I haven't even told you about the best characters you could pair with Zod. If unlike me, you have friends who play games with you willingly, you could request for your friends to pick one of the following characters. First runner-up for our knight in shiny armor is Ray. So picture this, you're on the battlefield, enemies finally surrounding you, the opposing pip even uses his ult on you for safe measure. 
but their damage? It just doesn't matter. See, Rey is another character that needs an entire video made on her, but for now all you need to know is she pretty much makes Azan immortal. And I know I've said this before, but now it's actually true. Unlike most healers that can simply be focused down and killed, Rey can ult to save both you and her, or just use her basic skill when linked to you to get insane damage reduction, negating even the heaviest of ultimates. How? Because it's not really damage reduction, it just sets all damage done to you to a specific number. A very, very low number. There's just no way of stopping this duo. Now, I thought I would never find something more toxic than Fury of being reset with Yagra, but this? This is worse, and if you really want to be hated by the entirety of Paladins, just add a Ceres. Gaze into the- Azan with Rey and Ceres is the meta of metas. You will not find a better team composition that can deal with that sort of toxicity. Honestly, any double support comp would infuriate the enemy team. So we figured out the healers. But does Azan do better with DPS characters? Or maybe even tanks? Of course he does! Because why wouldn't he? Azan's brother of steel, Fernando, is always glad to tag along, and works both in dive comps or just in amazing point tank while Azan spawn camps the enemy team. He adds another layer of survivability to the entire team and can rapidly apply Cauterize, which Azan himself struggles with. On the DPS side, the ultimate combo would be Vora, seeing as she has just as much, if not more, mobility, and is a broken character herself. Fellow OP characters doing OP character things. Doesn't that sound lovely? Don't kill her! Don't kill her! Don't kill her! No! Come on, man! You bullied me so much! I don't care! At the end of the day, Azan fits the best in dive comps, and can easily 4-0 even the best of teams. Your goal is to cram yourself so hard into the enemy's personal space that they start seeing you as just another wall, one that can walk and bonk over the head with a hammer. Speaking of which, don't we already have a champion like that? What was his name? I can't remember. Oh well, I guess it wasn't important. Azan is good into pretty much any character, even ones who can summon entire dragons, the only exception being Azan himself. When two Azans meet, strange things tend to happen. Smash somebody, come on, I dare you to. See, fighting Azan as Azan is completely pointless. In fact, you just make him stronger by feeding his ire, so simply ignore him and go after the enemy team. Like, look at this Corvus. He's sending me hard emotes, thinking he's so sly with his teleport, and then he tries to escape his teammates. He thinks he's safe. Well, you know what I think? Absolutely not. I mean it, let the enemy Azan shoot you all he wants, he will realize how futile it is eventually, but at that point it will be too late and you've already bludgeoned his support to death. In fact, just ignore all the tanks and go for their back line. Move out of the way, I'm, I'm killing your team. I'm not, I'm not like... So how can you counter Azan? You can't! Well, there are a few ways, but it won't always work, and the first way is simply use characters with execute ultimates, such as Pip, Drogos, Zin, Moji, Yagorath. Stop! Stop! You get the point. The only problem is it's not that consistent, as Hassan has CC immunity on his dash. Why? I don't know either, but apparently it's a feature. This makes landing some of those executes a bit more difficult, along with Hassan having incredible potential for the best outplays I've seen in a while. Wait, did I say Drogo's counters Azan? You know, the ultimate tank counter. Ugh, my bad, what I meant to say is Azan counters Drogo's. With your vertical mobility and multiple skills that can prevent Drogo's from doing the one thing he lives for, the punch. <laughs> you become the bane of Drogo's existence, sometimes even pushing the player over the edge of sanity. Classic Paladins. 
Aside from that, the most consistent way I've found to deal with him is simply pretend he doesn't exist. If you don't believe in a Zon, he can't be real. Your entire team at early game should just focus the enemy support, backline, and pretty much anyone except for a Zon. After you get a good number of picks, you can finally all focus on him. Now you would think it's easier to kill him with his entire team wiped, but even then, he's still very capable of solo pushing the payload. Eesh. Push it in? Yeah, there we go, Raven. <laughs> I'm just too good, what can I say? Too good. Late game, when you've stacked Cauterize 3, it becomes a bit easier to deal with him consistently, or you could just take another approach and simply give up. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? I know that seems like a lot, and it is, but that's simply the state of the game. Now with this tryhard stuff aside, let's talk about another playstyle that Azan has, and this one is actually fun. The I GO ZOOM ZOOM loadout consists of Solemn Watch 5, Grim Deliverance 5, and Indignation 3, the rest of the cards being fillers. So what exactly does it do? I'm out, dude. See ya. Yep, it turns you into a fighter jet. While being a weaker version of the main loadout, this gives Azan the mobility to fly all over the map and be like a giant annoying mosquito, one that whacks you over the head with a hammer as he flies by. This loadout feels great to play, I personally love any type of mobility, especially in such a mobility-deprived game as Paladins, and I also love harassing the back line. So this loadout seems to have been crafted just for me. Aw, hi Rez, you shouldn't have. No, really, you shouldn't have. What in the world were you thinking this overpowered ca- All that aside, Azan really does feel fun to play, and not just because he's completely busted. His overall kit is just fun. The combos and vertical mobility allows you to do some pretty crazy stuff, and I'm no exception. This Ash is gonna ult this? He's still first gun for the chip. No way. No way. I like that you can do that. That's great. With all these possibilities, one can get carried away at times. Raven, chill up a bit. <laughs> chill out, bro. No. And we haven't even discussed his best items. First off, we of course have Cauterize. In our current double support meta, it's just a must-have first item to do, well, anything. But now, here's a more interesting one. Veteran. Zon is one of the few champions that benefits from Veteran over Haven. You already have a lot of damage reduction built into your kit, and a pretty large health bar that gains a ton of HP from the percentages that Veteran provides. It's also cheaper, so you will have it up earlier than you would with Haven 3. Of course, if you already have Veteran and Cauterize maxed out, Haven and Kronos would be the really only other good options. This does depend on matchup, as some characters will force you to take Resilience, Illuminate, and so on. But Veteran especially just makes them that much stronger. With all these things combined, the Paladin's community becomes upset. Everyone hates Azan, but the Giga Chad Azan? <laughs> well, Azan just doesn't care. <laughs> Most games I've played as Azan turned into spawn camping the enemy team, and I wasn't even trying that hard. With him being so strong, sometimes I couldn't help but actually get bored of playing. Right, see you guys. See you later. I'm going. Oh. <laughs> I'm out, wait, boys. Wait, I'm out. What the see you hell later. Is off the line? Oh boy. <laughs> so what are we to think of Azan? Everyone seems to think he's still busted after the nerfs, and well actually, this time, I'll have to agree. Azan has become the worst balanced character we've seen in a while, even worse than Yagarath when she first came out, and that's saying a lot. I truly do like playing him and don't think his kit should be changed a bit, but the math on his heal and damage reduction really needs to be looked into. Maybe nerf his overall HP too? I have to give it to Evil Mojo, they really made a fun tank. Problem is, in his current state, he's not really fun for the team playing against him. Hopefully they'll Will balance him out and he will fall more in line with the other tanks. But as for now, I hope you all enjoy playing this busted Angel of Vengeance. And remember guys, Azan's shots hurt. Hey, what's going on everybody? I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry for taking so long to release. I've been pretty busy with live stuff and setting up my new PC. More info soon. I should be getting back to uploading more frequently now. I'd also like to mention that today's my birthday. So uh, yeah, I survived another year. Wow! Incredible! I'd like to shout out my patrons, Blaze, Try I Repeat, to buy a sander and the rest of these lovely people on screen, as well as the description below. We're currently hosting a giveaway on our Discord server and celebrating reaching 3k members. The prize will be the current Paladin's event pass, so if you'd like to join, click on the link in the description below. Wish you all a wonderful holiday season. That's pretty much it for this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.